Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. I was in my garage the other day uh, having a wee tidy up and I came across this um, Mountain CD7 CD-ROM changer. It's a 7 disc CD-ROM changer. And um, I uh, have a look on the back here and notice there was a SCSI interface. So this came off a PC. Uh, I've seen it running on a PC and um, I was wondering whether I could connect it to an Amiga so um, and also inspired by Lazy Game Reviews uh, recent video on a CD changer he uh, hooked up to a PC and uh, while I was watching that I remembered I had this so I kept an eye out for it um, so I thought I'll hook it up See how it goes on the um, A590 here, and um, you may have seen uh, a video where I um, hooked up the zip iMega zip drive here to the A590. Uh, so I'm booting off a zip disk on my Amiga 500. So let's try and um, hook up a CD-ROM to the old 500. Now. And you'll see on the back here there's a SCSI Terminator and this is the um, SCSI connector here and we've got some dip switches on the back here now because my zip drive here is set to ID5 so this uh, the rightmost three dip switches here You'll notice that um, they're labelled 1, 2 and 4, that's uh, binary coded decimal I think. Um, it's anyway, um, you'll notice that number 4 is switched down to the on position, so ID is 4, 2 is off, 1 is off, so the ID is set to 4. If I switch 2 down that would be ID 6, switch the uh, 1 down, the 2 and the 4 obviously that would be 7, uh, so you get all combinations of um, 4 through 7 there uh, oh no sorry uh, 1 yeah, one through 7 yeah so um, I've set the it, uh, to SCSI Terminator on and the parity check was on or I just left that and the SCSI 2 compatibility I switched on I think, yeah. So um, these are just audio output for outputting audio CD. So cable came with it. So this was already plugged in. And um, when I first looked at this, I saw that it's got this type of connector on it. It's a um, high density connector. And of course, I want to daisy chain it from um, the back of the zip drive here. And as you can see there, it's a D25, uh, the lower density D25 connector. It's guzzy. So, yeah, I um, had a wee rummage around in my eye eager bits and pieces, and uh, lo and behold, I found this adapter and wondered whether uh, you know I mean it looks pin compatible so I but I wondered whether it was actually compatible so um, hooked it up to the adapter here and um, there we go it's uh, now pin compatible with the zip drive Connect the power here. Right, so before I turn the Amiga on, I'll show you how this works here. So I thought a good um, a good test would be this Aminet set. And it's got four 
four CDs, A, B, C and D. So we'll load four discs. So disc A. B Oops. I've already done that. Now the machine can only read one disc at a time. It's a single disc player as such, but um, it can load uh, you know the seven the seven discs into the single player in here. Now I'm, I'm not sure whether this is going to work on the Amiga because there are no drivers or software available for this, for the Amiga that I can find anyway. Uh, but I do remember on the IBM um, that you it would mount the disk drive as a CD-ROM drive uh, and each of the seven disks that were loaded it would search through um, all seven slots so it would load each disk individually into um, into the drive, read them, and under the CD-ROM uh, in the file explorer, uh, it actually displayed each individual individual disk as a folder, a subfolder, rather than an actual disk. So it didn't mount all seven disks as such. So if you clicked on folder to access disk three, it would load disk three into the single player. You'd get your information off there and then you might want to go back to disk one and you just so you just click on folder one uh, under the CD-ROM in the file explorer so uh, I, I doubt whether this will work that way on the Amiga um, but anyway let's find out so um, that's all set to go, that's set to ID4 there Okay, so both the zip drive and the CD-ROM drive have power. I'm just going to turn the Amiga on. And hopefully... Yeah, looks like it's going to boot. Okay, so it's booting from the zip drive, that's exactly exactly what I wanted to see there. Okay, let's have a wee look on the Amiga itself. Okay, uh, there's the uh, CD-ROM there. Now I, I've already loaded the drivers, I know this works, so um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description as to where I found the driver on um, the Aminet site. So, uh, and also I'll show you the, uh, where the files are and what modifications need to be made um, to the uh, mount list and the startup uh, sequence, yeah, startup sequence. Okay, so that's reading the disk there. Okay, now um, the only way I can get disk 2 I mean, I tried just hitting um, disk 2 on the actual drive itself, and all that does is just eject the disk. And if I go back to disk 2, you kind of imagine that it would load disk 2 into the ROM, into the reader. But it doesn't. It's still set for A, so that's disk A, which is loaded in slot 1. So the only way to actually use this is as a single, is a single um, CD-ROM drive, really. So it's the, all, the, all this is pretty useless, apart from storing disks, maybe. Uh, so if you want to swap, you know, and you want to read disk B, you would have to um, physically take disk B out, eject A. And then um, put B in here, and you will see disk B should turn up. 
yeah, it is. It's called GFX, but it's the graphics disc. Yeah, so yeah, that's just a wee uh, quick look at that uh, CD-ROM drive there. I, I was hoping it would uh, be compatible with the Amiga, and it turns out it is to a certain extent. So if you if you download, uh, you, you can download the LHA file from Aminet. Um and it's this one here, MECD-ROM-1.15 to LHA. So that extracts to this MECD-ROM folder. Um, now there is an installer here, but it doesn't work. I, I uh, need to probably spend a little bit of time to find out why that's not working. Anyway, um, there's a CD-ROM guide here which tells you, uh, pretty much in a nutshell, that um, you need to copy the CD-ROM handler here into the L into the L folder on um, the hard drive or whatever di disk you're using. So that was. L drive. So there's the CD-ROM handler there. Okay, so just copy that in. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is um, devs colon mount list. Okay, and add this here. I'll get it zoomed in there so you can see it a bit, a bit better but this is shown in the, the document I mentioned before so it points to the wrong, the driver here to set these variables and um, and then all you have to do from there oh you'll notice also that the SCSI ID is set here so SCSI ID 4 right startup sequence or use a startup whatever you prefer I just put it in here uh, mount CD0 okay and reboot that was it really I was really surprised at how easy that was to do so um, and and thanks to that file that driver from Aminet and the and the good guide that came with it so I also tried I thought um, maybe I could mount a CD1, you know, CD2 through 7. Um, I experimented with just adding CD1, uh, but pretty much all it did is it just put an identical icon here, reading the same disk here, but it was, it was just a different label. Instead of CD0, it was CD1 here. Um, and it would come on and then blink off and come on, so it's behaving quite weirdly so um, you know I thought that might have been a way of getting it to sort of kick it into life but obviously there's some driver or software that's required to actually um, read the disk or you know read all seven disks and have them available to the system without um, swapping them in and out yeah so um, yeah just a, a quick one there on the uh, Mountain CD7 hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching